I'm Stacey Dombrowski. Welcome to My Matters, a show where we can answer all your questions about mind, body, and soul. Tonight's show is about how to successfully beat fibromyalgia. Joining me tonight is Dr. Fred Huey, who practices integrative medicine, conventional allopathic medicine, as well as Chinese medicine. He is often referred to as a human encyclopedia. Welcome to Mind Matters. Well, thank you for that introduction. Well, thank you for being here tonight. So tell me, how do you integrate all these different medicines in your practice, the allopathic medicine, conventional medicine? Well, I uh, love medicine. Okay. As a result, uh, once you become a family doctor, uh, you entrust with the angle of solving problem. And uh, when one set of toolbox is not enough to solve the problem, and if you take the attitude, this is your relative, and this is your daughter, this is your father, you have an obligation to go beyond. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I look into many other toolboxes and usually find some useful tools on each one. So just like somebody uh, have several languages in the brain, once you speak, sometimes you just intermingle them. They have no longer have any international boundary. And uh, I find that work well. I love that because when I was speaking to you on the phone yeah. just about a week ago, you said people refer to you as a human encyclopedia. And as I spoke to you more and more, I started to really realize, wow, this doctor knows his stuff. From natural medicine to conventional medicine, I'm really learning a lot even through this conversation as we were speaking on the telephone. And as we were discussing, you know, what can we bring to mind matters between you and I, we spoke about fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. I thought that is such a great topic, something I've always wanted to explore. So how can we explain fibromyalgia to the viewers? Because it's such a, a difficult topic to explain. Uh, it's generally a term that people use when there's no out of the real diagnosis. Doctor eventually just put it in a kind of everything as a backup term when they don't find an answer. And in a joking manner, when you go in and feeling achy body and you're headachy, and after the doctor see you and he also become headachy, that's <laughs> type of fibromyalgia. <laughs> okay, and people don't often take it serious. They don't know how to diagnose it. Well, it's just fibromyalgia, so then what? What do we do with that, that diagnosis? Up to now, conventional medicine really don't have an approach to it. Uh, just become a scumbag to just throw all the leftover and basically said, there's partly psychological, maybe you imagine there's no real physical structure problem and therefore maybe it in, exists in your mind, maybe you have some depression and therefore you imagine all this problem. A typical fibromyalgic patient is an end stage where the body becomes very dysfunctional in pretty well all aspects of the body. The mind's no good, the bowel's no good, the, the, the energy no good. Uh, as a result, uh, but the hallmark feature really is a key body, a uh, few tired. Uh, to me, actually, when a person feels fluish, a key body, feel under the weather, uh, don't feel like anything, so, to me, that's fibromyalgia. So does this just come on all of a sudden? So one day um, somebody's feeling great, and then all of a sudden, all these symptoms come onto the body, they go see a doctor and they just don't understand what has happened? Or is it something that over time, mm. they start to feel all these symptoms? Well, both. Uh, people gradually drift into it as one, or people just because of one uh, sudden event, like a stress, a car accident, or, or a death of a family, some emotional event that takes completely your coping ability of the body, and then the body can't cope anymore. And then not just emotionally, but physically, you become just like dragged down by a fluish feeling and the body just body ache. So as opposed to chronic fatigue syndrome, which is fatigue, this fibromyalgia have an achy component. Your non-specific, every body parts become uh, painful, but yet if people take x-ray, do not see a specific joint having problem. That's fibromyalgia. So is this a matter of the mind and the body having a disconnect because the mind is traumatically being, mm. um, going through a trauma, like mm. you were saying. The mind goes through a trauma, uh, you're saying a death, a loss, uh, something happens to that person and then the body takes on a physical aspect. I don't sense. think that this way. That's sometimes what doctors think 
because you are now you're out of your mind, therefore you imagine all this physical symptom. It's not. I think these people generally have a low-grade flu that sit in the system, or they have a winter uh, that uh, caught the flu, they never get over, or if they have some type of surgery, they have some entry of bacteria into the body, such as the gum surgery, bowel surgery, or gynecological procedure, and then your body are holding them back and fighting it, then until somehow your body occupied uh, emotionally or physically by another test, and suddenly you couldn't cope anymore, then the criminal sitting in your body waiting to flare up flares on you. So this is really interesting. So somebody could have a surgery or a trauma or any of these things that you're saying, but fibromyalgia can show up in different aspects then. So you can get the flu one day, you can have uh, weak knees the next day, your shoulder can hurt the next day. Is that how mm. it can come out? Like it's just different aspects? Uh, it's a, quite a generalized symptoms. Uh, generally, it's not specific one knee or two knee. They feel generally the body achy as if you've got arthritis, but yet doctors do not see a specific joint. Okay. And I, I keep using the word achy, just like when you are get about to get a flu or tail end of flu, you see how the, the body ache. So it, it, this is constant though. It's yeah. constantly in the body, so you don't get a break tomorrow. And then constant, the of course, when you're up happy, down. you're feeling uh, a bright day, good, good weather, and then after you have good rest, you feel better. And then uh, after you become exhausted, everything uh, become worse. And also like a flu, sometimes they have flare up days. So some days uh, the low grade infection is flaring up, maybe once a week you feel, oh, today is really, I feel down. Is fibromyalgia known as a autoimmune disease? Is it one of the autoimmune diseases? Doctor, when they don't understand, throw everything called autoimmune. Uh, to me, it's not. I, I, I think it's a autoimmune disease, say the body attacking your body yep. for no reason. To me, uh, if there's a the flu in the body, there's a virus infection, the body uh, rightfully attack it. So, but of course, whenever you're got arthritis, doctors call it autoimmune disease, and they say, well, your body immune system for no reason hitting your joint, hitting your muscles. But to me, the body is doing its job. Mm -hmm. and there is things to be hit, and that's why you generate a little bit of low-grade. A lot of people have a bit of low-grade chills, low-grade fever. Hold your thought. We're Am I getting we're something in? You are. Hold your thought. We're going to yeah, go yeah, to a break. Yeah, when we right. come back, more on how to successfully beat fibromyalgia.
Welcome back to My Matters. We're discussing fibromyalgia with Dr. Fred Huey. So let's go right back into symptoms of fibromyalgia, as you were discussing with me before. What are some of the deeper symptoms of fibromyalgia? How can we really go right into them? Well, easy to say that when you feel nothing go right, mm. uh, uh, then it's fibromyalgia. Because what happens is the breakdown of the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland is a coping gland that uh, keep everything in homeostasis and keep them steady. So when that department fails, uh, many things go wrong. Your example, your blood pressure, a lot of people tend to be a bit low. Mm -hmm. And when they get up quickly, they get dizzy. They cannot adjust the blood pressure. And blood sugar go low. Uh, when you're hungry, people don't feel they can last. And then uh, you, you, you can hold, there's craving, there is uh, dips of your blood sugar, you don't feel well. And then uh, do not manage to regularly accommodate weather, accommodate season, accommodate. Your adrenal gland is supposed to hold you steady for everything. So your intestinal function, your sleep function, your day and night cycle. And then on top of that having, that's adrenal gland, and on top of that having So the adrenal uh, gland is a thyroid then, am I right? Uh, no, adrenal gland is two glands sitting on top of the kidney. Ah, okay. And then, totally off for me then, yeah, okay. The okay. thyroid and adrenal gland look after both similar function. Okay. They are both an energy. One, the thyroid is the catalyst, mm. uh, and the adrenal gland is the furnace. Between these two work together. I see. And both of them draw a horse, uh, draw, draw a, two horses drawing a cart. Okay. And then if any one of them break down, you get tiredness. I see. And a lot of people, generally thyroid people tend to be a bit, uh, a bit swollen, a bit plump, uh, difficult loss weight. Adrenal people tend to be thin, uh, frail. They both feel tight, they feel, feel cold. But somebody who doesn't have any of these problems and still has fibromyalgia, let's say, could that be an underlying root that they need to check? Exactly. Uh, so these are even this is something that people, they have to then look into. Most doctors have not kind of aware of the word adrenal mm -hmm. because there's no concrete test on the conventional medicine to test it. But a lot of, based on a lot of symptoms, and there's also some alternative tests such as saliva tests sent away to the United States to, to document it. And Therefore, what, what doctors would a don't test, diagnose it. What would a saliva test tell you? Saliva, you collect four times during one day. In the morning, look at the secretion of cortisol, and uh, noon time, and then four o'clock, and then bedtime. Mm -hmm. And normal people should wake up full of energy and gradually come down, and then by four o'clock, gradually less, and then nighttime become lowest, and then go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But many people, a uh, typical is that uh, low adrenal people don't have morning energy. Uh, very difficult to get started, and then uh, they have some energy by coffee and to kick it out, and by three, four o'clock, you're ready to go to go home. The only time they wake up is after dinner, then they feel that there's some energy come back and mm -hmm. then become difficult sleeping. So if somebody has low adrenal glands, then how do they, how would they correct that? What would they do? Uh, my approach, generally conventional medicine really don't have an answer for that. Uh, my approach is I replace, just like a thyroid, lack of thyroid, I, I use prescription, uh, a low dose, physiological dose of uh, cortisol to give back the body what is not secreting. And uh, if people blood pressure is very low, I give back something that also support the mineral absorbing hormone mm -hmm. to give back the body. So I top them up, but at the same time, I try to rebuild the adrenal gland. And I do use an injurious uh, drip mm -hmm. that contains a lot of the raw material, the multivitamins and minerals. And also I use some gland extract uh, from cow's adrenal gland. Mm -hmm. That resonate and vibrate the gland so that it get back into a higher level of function. So one is to replace, the other one is to rejuvenate. So this is great. So See, you're right. Conventional doctors w do not go that extensive to the root of the problem. No. But you'd obviously have to test to see if you, somebody is high or low in their adrenal glands. Conventional doctors used yes. to use antidepressant. Uh, they oh, give okay, so that's the way that they would just because they feel put the band-aid on. Because you're not sleeping, therefore you get generate also a skin pain, and they give you antidepressant that's sleepy enough, and then make you sleep, and hopefully you feel better. But then most of them as a sedative 
uh, even though a sedating antidepressant linger in the next day. Mm. And the typical is called amitriptyline, and, and you feel sleepy to sleep, but next day you're hangover, you're still tired, and also make you gain weight. So, so they I would give you amitriptyline for fibromyalgia? Yes rather than this type of treatment, which you're saying is yeah. something that would actually repair the body, where this yeah. is just like putting a Band-Aid on. Generally, conventional medicine do not have the insight in the deep, deeper level. Or the time. Yeah, and they give you pain pills and then uh, amitriptyline, and then basically said, well, it's in your mind. Mm -hmm. That's very, it's very interesting. I never even thought of that way, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know that they gave you an antidepressant. Obviously, if you're depressed, you go into a psychiatrist's office or a doctor's office, they usually like to say, would you like yeah. some antidepressant? And but generally, doctors do not love to see fibromyalgic patients. So whatever they can quickly get you off the seat and get back to you out of your sight, out of your mind, is the, is the quickest method they want to deal with it. Can fibromyalgia be cured? Is it curable? Uh, this is a multifactorial area. And so with good insight and the whole body drop off. So if uh, an integrated physician, you try to... in adjust all the parameters and put back in the place. I have good results for it. Therefore, I look forward to seeing patients like this of this nature. Mm -hmm. Because when you have the right tool, you're happy to see it. When you don't have tool, you're dragged to see it. So, but they can obviously, if, if once they've had it, would it be something that they have to look out for for the rest of their life, that they no, come no. back? No, I'm, no. I'm myself, I'm looking to cure it. And mm -hmm. therefore, if a person has a chronic flu, we look for what type of germs and then uh, I often use uh, such as intravenous hydrogen peroxide, which is a universal germ killer. It tends to be viruses. So you clean up the virus and the patients recover. So uh, I give them a series of treatment and progressively, if people used to have low-grade sweat, low-grade uh, chills, and as being treated, and they no longer feel the chills, no longer go to low-grade fever, and then they lift up the, the flu. Yeah, it sounds like you boosted their immune system. We're going to go to a break. I boosted the immune yeah. system. I killed the germs and get rid of it. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, when we come back, okay. more on how to successfully beat fibromyalgia. We're discussing how to successfully beat fibromyalgia with Dr. Fred Huey. Let's talk about the chronic flu. Mm -hmm. How do we get rid of the chronic flu and what is a chronic flu? Um, the most doctors think of infection as bacteria, but there's a lot of viruses and there's two types of germ called mycoplasma and chlamydia. 
is those are semi virus that uh, don't have a cell wall and they live inside the body and the doctors on blood tests do not see them and then uh, they if it's floating in the blood the body can get rid of it quite well okay. there's a few common location that the body cannot penetrate the sinuses the prostate the gynecological tubes these are some of the area that uh, once infection get in, the body have difficulty get rid of it. So then they spread in the bloodstream episodically. That's why people don't feel bad all the time. And then once a week and a few time, few days in a row, they feel uh, episode of low grade flu. And then when the body get rid of it uh, in the bloodstream, they feel okay again. Mm -hmm. But it never get rid of the sore. So. Uh, when I see a patient, I look for the gum disease. People have root canals, and they was never cleaned up well, and they become a source of infection on the gums area and the spread in the sinuses or prostate or gynecological. After childbirth, after abortion, many people often have catch some infection down below. This is really interesting because I hear a lot about the the, the mouth, what mm -hmm. you're saying about mm -hmm. the infection, about going to the dentist, coming back, it, it doesn't leave, or sexually transmitted diseases mm -hmm. with what you're saying, mm -hmm. or having many different partners, somebody who has many different partners, the gynecological mm -hmm. uh, issue that you're saying, but I never thought about it being the chronic flu, the way you're actually putting it together. In fact, there's a whole Sounds really school interesting. Of thought. I'm learning something new right now. I so. thought that, uh, that was, I really subscribe to many arthritis, the real arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid uh, lupus, it's really is these type of infection got in deeper into the joints and the body cannot go and chase after the bugs that's embedded in the joint and therefore they multiply inside the joint the body have to attack the joint therefore damage the joint and cause a lot of the pain and then so uh, these respond are a lot of time to antibiotic if uh, you give a low dose antibiotic you clean out the joint and uh, many people swear by it so if you put people, uh, for the readers and uh, audience, go to the internet, put down infection uh, plus uh, arthritis, you see a lot of theory. So you were just saying about antibiotics working, but somebody who's taken an antibiotic over and over and over again for a sinus infection, uh, let's say a sexually transmitted disease, uh, mm. an ear infection, whatever infection, the tooth infection, and you're taking antibiotics, let's say two, three times a year, yeah. and now you're probiotics are low in the stomach. And then on top of that, a lot of them is fungus. you got the fungus overgrowth. Candida. Yeah, and candida. And so a lot of sinus is, you treat antibiotics, you don't get rid of the bacteria component, but there's a, there's a fungus component to it. Mm. And then it's tough uh, using conventional approach of antibiotic alone. But, but do you ever actually get rid of the chronic flu then? So even though you're taking this medication, is it is the infection not still in the body if it's traveling from sinus to ear to throat? I'm just curious. Cause That's why I do have to use a comprehensive way to look at the infection, find out the source and try to eradicate the source as much as possible, find the right agent for the type of infection that was happening in the body. And uh, or I use things like intravenous hydrogen peroxide which is a universal germ killer that cover virus, fungus, and bacteria. What do you think about people who rinse their mouth out with um, hydrogen peroxide or put drops in their ears? Is that safe? It's safe. To do that? It's, it's safe. Because and it's uh, controversial, I know, with the ears. You know, so you put it externally, it's, uh, it's totally safe. It's oxygen and water. Mm -hmm. Can it hurt your eardrums if you put no. a couple drops of peroxide no. inside your ears? Well, or is that a good thing to do? What you buy is a 3%, and 3% is Joe, well, it's a skin level. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's just bubble oxygen into the area. Mm -hmm. So that's a safe thing to do. Yeah. And the chronic... The only thing is not to not take internally by mouth. Not to swallow it, yeah. but you can gargle with it and yeah, it yeah. would actually clean any sores yeah. or... If people have breath breath, let's say if you've got a low-grade infection in the mouth, that fermentate and always give a putrefying breath breath, hydrogen peroxide is the method to clean the breath breath. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's also good to whiten your teeth if you're rinsing with it. I know, mm. I've heard dentists tell me that. And i not necessarily doing that concentration. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have braces, I, I was told, if you, my son has braces, so if you just rinse with the peroxide no every problem. once in a no while, problem. I guess yeah. it's a good thing. You clean. You yeah, clean just cleaning it. the mouth around. Yeah, yeah. 
So the uh, internal infection, is it possible that you can boost, well, I'm sure it's possible, but so how can you boost the immune system that's in, why, in such a way? That's why you, we have to focus on the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland depend on a lot of, many of these B vitamins uh, is actually ingredient for the adrenal gland to operate. And the, the body have an energy producing uh, mechanism called Krebs cycle. You apply all the ingredient or the nutrient, the, that energy producing cycle come back into place and generate enough energy and what we call ATP in the body for a person to operate. And uh, people that have fibromyalgia when they're low adrenal gland, if they get a regular doctor would often say, oh, go and exercise, you'll be less tired. These are the group of people when they exercise, they spend the battery, next day they pay for it, they feel they're more drained. tired. Yeah. Those are indication the patient of low adrenal gland. Yeah, I, and I agree. They would have lower adrenal gland because the exercise takes something cold out hands, of you. Cold hands, cold feet, uh, feeling generally cold intolerance. Generally, those people are adrenal gland people. Uh, low thyroid also have cold intolerance, but low adrenal gland, they have cold hands, cold feet, and that's some of, some of them overlap, but somewhere in these two areas when people are tired, I look into these two hormone areas. That's right. Uh, it's quite relevant. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. So we're going to go to a break shortly, but when we come back, I want to discuss with you about, I know that you're spiritual. You have a spiritual side to you because you mm. don't only do conventional mm. medicine, mm. but I want to discuss with you your thoughts on the emotional and psychological and physical parts of the body and how they're connected. So mm. we're going to go to a break. When we come back, we'll discuss mm. that. Okay. More on how to successfully beat fibromyalgia when we come back.